I'm Stefan Bauman, and welcome to another podcast. Today we're going to look at what's in a name. As an artist, you want to always be thinking about how you're going to get your artwork out there and how you're going to brand your name. Your brand is your name. Your name is your brand. Everything you do has to have your name on it. If you're going to do videos, you need to put your name across the top of it. People look at these things, but they never look at where they come from. If you're going to have a work of art that you're going to post, have your name visible on it. Everything revolves around your brand. Branding is important. If you are thinking you don't want to sell your work, that might be so right now, but be prepared that at some point you will, because after all, if an author writes a book and nobody reads it, why would he write a book? And it's the same thing with painting. If you do painting, yes, the pleasure of painting is wonderful, but if nobody sees it, you're going to find yourself feeling kind of empty and, and find another hobby to do. So sit back and relax and enjoy this episode on getting your name out there and building your brand. We're at the third level of our, our group here, and as, as you can see, it's kind of a small group today. We've got a couple of paintings that we're going to be looking at, um, but, you know, that's the whole point of being in this situation with, you know, the third tier. So we can interact together more, and you can ask questions. We can talk about your painting, get a little bit more in depth. Obviously, if we have more people participating, there's more variety. I have an art uh, workshop coming up in... Uh, June and the interesting thing with my workshops is that the more people that participate in the style of painting that I teach in the better it is and as you know from my other videotapes I'm always asking so what were you thinking what were you thinking and I'm always waiting for a response and when we go outdoors to go paint and when we're doing these kind of zoom calls if we only look at two paintings, three paintings, four paintings, it's not like getting a lot of a lot of other uh, input into into what we're doing. You know, so like if we have more more paintings to look at, we have more things to discuss, the more powerful we have. So even if you're not going to be able to do that, because last week, Lance, you weren't part of our call, were you? We just uh, we just looked at your paintings and you kind of watched the videotape afterwards. So so uh, you know that's very powerful. Hello. Hello, Maggie. How are you? We had we had a coaching call this morning, which was pretty good. That she started Maggie started talking about all these questions, and I said, "Well, hold off, Maggie. We you know let's talk about it in the group because part of the group here is marketing." And uh, Lance, you actually had some marketing questions too. So uh, uh, thank you. I'm sure there's going to be more people that are going to be coming into our talk. But the more the more people that submit things, even if you're not going to be part of the talk, if the more that we can uh, discuss about uh, you know different uh, circumstances of your composition. Uh, ideas, ideas, you know, it's great when we have a lot of people and ideas flow. I work better when there's 25, 30, and even my workshops up in Mount Shasta, if I, I've had three people show for the workshop and it's really hard to spend three days hovering over three people. I mean, by the end of that weekend, you're like, okay, I've had enough of you. But when we have 15 or 20, there's just a lot of camaraderie, a lot of input, a lot of things that that we can discuss and so you know even if it's just painting so i'm making an appeal to the second and third tier that if you can't make it on saturday to our zoom call by all means you know submit stuff to, and ask questions and i have this new question and answer kind of thing that i want to introduce this week and uh if if you can try to uh, think about questions that you like to have answered and then everybody can get in on it. You know, my main focus on doing this whole uh, Patreon thing is to try to be available for people. Um, and I think for some people like Lance, you know, who can't quite afford the coaching, this is a, this is a, a good option for him to be, you know, coached by me. But, you know, if you're in a situation where you can have coaching and this, 
it's just like having your bread and a bunch of peanut butter and some jelly on top. So, and now with this new question and answer thing, you can have another piece of bread on top. So it's like a full sandwich of things. So uh, just trying to be as much accommodating as possible. It's really hard again, like I said, to go into Facebook and go in through those critiques because I just don't work that way. And I don't think my philosophy works so much where you go, well, just put a little bit more blue in the sky and you'll be okay. It just doesn't work. It, you, we, I'm kind of like down in the trenches. I want to get into your head, right, Maggie? It's like, it's like, uh, That's fine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we really, we really get into, into, you know, what's going on. Um, Maggie had a really awesome, can I share your story today? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay. So it's just part of, part of, you know, the coaching and part of the zoom calls and all this stuff is to hear what other people are up to. And, and Maggie went to a park, uh, kind of a historical park. And this is the great thing about getting out and doing something and doing some plain air. Um, and so she went to a historical park and uh, she's there painting and it's kind of a public place. So she kind of had permission to go there and she said, do you mind if I go and, and paint over there? I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take care of myself. And so she's, you know, here in this where they have all of those recreation buildings before like a tobacco farm. And so she's in there painting and there's all these people dressed up in all of the garb and everything. And then and the, the manager of the place or the superintendent of the place came over, introduced her, himself to Maggie and said, you know, it was almost like out of the heavens, Maggie shows up and he goes, oh, my God, I need somebody like you to 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 paint some of these uh, people we have here and some of the historical things. And maybe we could have a show for you. And maybe, you know, so Maggie and I were like going, oh, my God, this is like a gift. Because you have situations where you think, you know, how am I going to get my work out there? And part of learning how to do that is to get out there. And so she's got full access now. I mean, he wants Maggie to paint the people who dress up in costume there for the museum there. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like, do I really want to do that? You know, do I really? But... You know, you get a kind of you get a kind of have these models now that actually the superintendent says go work with this artist, and so you can imagine the photography, you can imagine the wealth of, of that you can gather. You know, it's hard to get people to dress up in, in in decent costumes to even sit for a portrait, but here it's almost like part of their job. So they're going to work with you that way. You're going to have access to be there on the premises. You're going to have people coming in and out of a place that people go to. And Maggie says it's a little intimidating when you have all that, but the, you know, you gotta have your cards ready. You know, part of this layer three is the marketing part of it. And so you gotta have your cards ready and you gotta have your story ready and you know, uh, be prepared to, to uh, uh, have uh, introductions. So when people ask you, you know, what are you doing here? Um, you, you can kind of tell them, well, you're just there to record part of the history. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a really big deal. And it's all because she got up one morning and said, I'm going to go paint the tobacco park, you know? And so it's, it's, it is really, it makes a difference when you go and make a difference in your art. So uh, it was really exciting. So yeah, she's on a totally different trajectory just on that one day so it's like oh yeah we could have auctions and then we also talked about you know uh, doing prints of people and you know of course they're thinking about fundraisers all the time and so one thing that I said is that the museum itself probably or the people probably don't have the money to buy an original painting for you know thirty four thousand dollars which Maggie demands for her work but um, I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but you know she's yeah I know it's like she, would, she wishes well after she gets through with this maybe she can um, but uh, uh, you know even even a couple of hundred dollars uh, you know she she had done a portrait of a thing and she went in only a couple hundred dollars and they were like oh that's too steep but you know people should pay the price that it costs uh, but the thing is, you know, she could do these wonderful historical paintings with all these people in their costumes and have them pose 
and have the opportunity to really paint some amazing paintings that she can use for her own artwork and and you know kind of really make a historical thing and then she could put it up on um uh, fine art america and if she puts in a high resolution image on fine art america the the museum curator could order all the prints he wants she doesn't have to deal with it she'll get a little cut you know a commission off of it but he'll be responsible to order it. He'll be responsible to get her framed. He will be responsible. And then he'll be responsible for either giving it as a gift to the employees or putting it up in the museum. And Maggie's kind of out of the picture. So she gives them, you know, she's just doing the, the original work for it. So there's just a really wonderful opportunity when you're doing things like this. You know, you got to keep your eye open. And one thing I love is marketing. You know, well, there's probably two things that I love the most. And one is just talking about art. And so, you know, that's why with me, Zoom works really well because I get to talk and I have all these faces to look at. Um, and the second thing I love is marketing and I love guerrilla marketing. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how, how did you get where you are and, and how did you, you know, uh, get the opportunity for them to give you a television show for PBS? And I go, Nothing I ever did was given to me. Everything that I've ever done in painting has been something that I've strived and worked towards, had the idea. I had the idea to do marketing, uh, a, a PBS television show in Yosemite in 1980. And there was, you know, it was just a group of us plain air painters banding around an idea of like, hey, Stefan, this is so much fun. Does anybody else go outdoors to paint? I go, I don't know, because we didn't have the internet back then. And so I said, no, I think we're the only ones. It's the best kept secret. And they said, well, why don't you do something like this for the for the masses, like that guy with the big hair, Bob Ross? You know, it looks like he's always having fun. And I said, good idea. Let's do it on the national parks. And back then, we didn't have handy cell phones and stuff. We had big beta cameras. And it took me 10 years of, of knocking on doors and marketing myself to finally get them to do a national PBS television show on me. And we did 17 episodes. So we did really well with that. And uh, I'd continue on doing that, but I, I kind of got what I wanted out of it. And that's really a great marketing tool. Uh, there's just so much more that we can do with marketing, but you can't do it by sitting at home. You can't do it by not interacting and having other people participate in helping you. You know, by Maggie having this wonderful opportunity to to show her work, um, uh, it's going to change a lot of things if if she plays it right. And this is just one opportunity. So, anyway, we'll get back to that in a bit. Stop. Yes. Hey, Stefan. Yes. I was going to tell you, too, um, they have a big launching once a year for this with the State Agriculture Commissioner for the state of North Carolina. And one of the things I was thinking of, too, is if I could get a really good painting, they might, at the banquet, would be willing to, like, have an auction on a piece um, mm -hmm. to raise money for the museum and give me a, a cut, you know, just from the my part too. Well, you know, so, yeah, that see, an idea I had. And see, and you're thinking about marketing now, you know, and this is the thing for all the people that are in the, these tiers here. Um, you really want to be thinking about all the time marketing. That's what you do. You become a full time marketer. And just like you getting this idea, like, well, they have this big banquet to raise money. What if we auction it off? And, and it, it would be probably who of you to just give it and not worry about anything that you get out of it because you're going to get a lot of stuff from them yeah. before then um you know you need the practice for painting anyway so uh you know if it's if you can practice your painting and and do something and I'm scrambling to get all my marketing yeah yeah so so but I'm scrambling the, to get my business cards and all that now yeah well that's that's what this tier is for you know so we're going to be talking more about that and I said, yeah, I want to record some of this stuff so that people that are on this third tier can watch this later on. And, uh, yeah, we do have quite a few people on our third tier. So, you know, they're not all just here. So I want them to get the benefits of all this. But 
you know, it, it, it's kind of fun when all of a sudden you have a market and you think, oh my God, it's like I could have this auction piece and I could start, you know, getting some of my work out there. The key to it though, the, the golden key uh, for this is um, uh, their mailing list. And that's just between us, you know. But these people that do this kind of fundraising are connected with people who are connected with people that have lots of money. And usually if you come with integrity into a situation like you're slowly heading in, like we went in in 1975, we did a fundraiser in my art group uh, for Make-A-Wish. And back in 1975, it was a really small organization. And, you know, we had the president of Make-A-Wish. Um, and I think it was a Bay Area, Bay Area uh, program at the time. I could be wrong. But uh, he got involved with it early on. And this is when they were really striving to get. Now it's a multi-million dollar corporation. But back then it was like any dollar counted. And we... We raised probably about $10,000 through an art show for Make-A-Wish. And for them, that was a big deal. That pretty much took care of you know, lots of wishes for children in the Bay Area. And of course, they weren't launching people into outer space back then. It was like kids just wanting to go to Disneyland and stuff. So, so it, was a, it was a possible, probable thing. But at the time, we got him involved and we had access to their mailing list. And, and back then, they didn't have an email list. It was a hard file letter, zip codes, and, and you know the old-fashioned mailing list um, on stickers. And we put together, we had, I don't know, like four or 5,000 um, uh, uh, imitations that we had to put stickers on hand and hand stamp all of them and it was just a, it was an incredible thing and we got a lot of people to the show but you know i being a marketer you know at the time it's like yes we'll do it unfortunately i didn't make xeroxes of all those addresses because there was a lot of high-powered people on there i mean you know joe montana was on the list and some of the other big football players were on the list and so you know i could have taken full advantage and ha include them. But, you know, I was kind of being integritous. But you can, you know, you, what you want to do is that you want to operate through them. So they have they have a mailing list that uh, they use. And that mailing list, uh, let's say they might have 2,000, 3,000 people that donate to that company. So you get them to send invitations out that not only just invite them to come to the to the ball or the or the reception, but you have them actually put on the top of their mailing list or on their invitation a picture of your painting, and in letters you know to be auctioned off, uh, you know Maggie Watkins um, original painting of you know tobacco farming and you know whatever whatever you end up kind of telling them you want to do, that alone is good marketing and they may even you know you might even be able to talk to them because one of the key factors and we'll talk about this in some of the questions we have but it can't be said enough but when you are marketing your work one thing you kind of have to understand is that somebody needs to see an image seven times before they see it the first time and if you go back to this particular organization, you say, you know what? We'd really like to get this painting auctioned off for a high price. Let's send out an invitation and then let's send out another invitation. And most of their invitations probably will be email. And then maybe you could say, you know, let's, let's pump the painting up a little. Let's send out another semi-invitation to everybody, but let's really talk about the, the painting that's going to be auctioned off. So there you got one, you get two, you get three. Maybe you can get a fourth one out of it. You know, so you try to get the images out yeah. there. And you know, page too. well, that's it too. And they'll probably give you free access to put that on. And you could have like 
a painting of you, you know, a photo of you painting the scene, a, a, a photograph of the people in the painting, photograph of the scene, maybe a half finished painting. The thing is, that's the kind of marketing you want to get into. Most people just show up. You know, it's like I was I was talking with with uh, one of my students who's going to have a really big art show and she just did it and she she knocked it out of the park. It was amazing. But one of the most important things you can have every every Bauman student is required. And Maggie, you need to do this like tomorrow if you're going to go back there. But when you go outdoors to paint, when you are having an art show, when you go to the grocery store before you go to the art show, when you are around an event that you have an invitation in your hand, you get yourself one of these. See that? It's a, it's a uh, name tag that you put on yourself, right? Name tag. Just a name tag, yeah. But okay. these are these are metal and you know, and they come with a um, uh, magnet in back, so you can put it through your coat. Now I wear a lot of heavy leather jackets, so I can't put the needle in. So that you have this this heavy magnet here, and you can put it up here, and it sticks to everything, so you don't have to put a hole in your okay. thing. Now the thing is, what makes this is a treasure is that this is this is Stephen's name tag. You know, to make it Stefan, I have that. And what that is, you can't see that, but what that is is actually a French medallion. Let's see if I can see it. See, it is, it's a bronze, gold gilded French medallion that actually I got off of Etsy. And it is actually a, an award given in one of the salons in France. And it actually says Pitié de art show, whatever, in the back, it's like for landscape painting. And so I purchased this on eBay and I have it, you know, hung like that on there. So it draws attention. So when I'm shopping around in Walmart, you know, people are like, ooh, what's that? And I go, well, I'm an artist and I just, you know, I'm planning, I had to go buy some cups for my art show. And uh, so we have some paintings over, you know, over there at the local uh, park over there. You know, um, would you like to come? And you hand them an invitation. And, you know, and the thing is, you just never know. When you, when you have an event like that, you just never know. So one of the things that I've talked about in the past is that I have uh, a, a, an art show that we did in Danville. And we uh, were doing hard, this is back before we had email addresses. And so we're doing the old fashioned envelope stamp, which is still a, the best way to go if you wanna invite somebody to something. And she, uh, there was a stack of them. All the, every student had to get rid of 100 invitations. And this is kind of, this is part of the whole marketing thing. It's like, okay, so, so you're gonna have a dinner event, Maggie, and you're gonna get 100 hardcore invitations, not just email stuff, but 100. You have to ask yourself, so, where am I going to bring this? So we would have a talk every week, like how we're going to get rid of a hundred and everybody had a hundred to get rid of. And somebody say, well, there's a local dog, a doctor uh, mall over there. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go in and, and put it in everybody's mailbox there. And somebody would say, oh, I know all the car dealership people all belong. You know, they go to a luncheon here. I'll take those in or I'll send them to somebody. Some people had some important people on their list. You try to get rid of 100 invitations and you can see the first 25 is easy, but then you have to start thinking about how do I get rid of the rest of them? Some of them you can put up in coffee shops and posters and things like that. So we, the gal was sending off her, her stack of envelopes and she's at the post office. And the, the guy, the clerk is sitting there going, so what are these for? And she says, well, we're having an art show you know, uh, at the end of the month and uh, would you like to come? So she handed him an invitation. And he goes, well, I don't have money, nor do I'm not interested in art that much, but my neighbor is, he's a lawyer, and I know he buys art, so I'll pass it on to him. He came to the art show and he bought three paintings. Just because the clerk at the post office knew him, you know? And that was the one guy that bought multiple paintings 
and it was just from a contact at the post office. So you're at Walmart and you're dealing with somebody that's a checker over there and you know you you do a gracious thing and don't judge her and you give her an invitation. Her uncle might be the richest man in town. You don't know what you don't know. And so it's a wonderful market opportunity. And when you have stuff like this on your coat, you're going to have people come up and go, what's that for? And then it says right here, it says, you know, I, I put on, we talked a little bit about this earlier, Maggie. Isn't this third tier fun? We, I get to talk all the time here. But we only got four paintings to talk about. We'll get to that too. But it says um, uh, the Grandview, which I talked to Peggy this morning about that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then Stefan Bauman, PBS artist. So, um, but all of you, when you get off the, the, this recording, all of you need to at least go get a nameplate. And, you know, it's, it's kind of good just to put your name, your marketing name, which is your name, right, Maggie? And then what you want to do is put, you know, uh, landscape artist, fine artist, um, um, legendary artist. You could go way out there like, you know, uh, the best artist in the world. Um, yeah, is anything to, to engage in a conversation. And you laugh. But, you know, this whole conversation is about marketing, isn't it? So there's an artist here in, in uh, Oregon. And she, I've, I've never met her, but you know, being an artist up here in Oregon, um, I hear of her a lot. A lot of people go, go, oh, do you know Linda? And I go, Linda, the world's greatest artist. And they go, yeah, do you know her? And I go, no, but I've heard of her. So Linda has been around here for years and years and years. And her, you know, her by her code name is Linda, the world's greatest artist. And everybody in the world knows her as that. Is she the world's greatest artist? I don't know. But sometimes when you proclaim yourself that, you sure ask, you have a lot of people that want to say, well, let's see what that looks like. You know, so, so imagine if you started, if you had a name tag and it said, Linda, the world's greatest artist. You know, if you had that, or Maggie, the world's greatest artist, and you walked into Walmart with that on your name tag, do you think there are a few people that would go, really? What makes your artwork so great? And then you go, well, you're just going to have to go to my website and see it. Yeah, but then you have to carry that shtick all the time. You can't declare yourself the world's greatest artist this week and then be moping around saying my artwork sucks the following week. You kind of have to wear that on your sleeve. Yeah. And the thing is, it works. I, I know her as the world's greatest artist. I refer to her as the world's greatest artist. I've never seen one of her paintings. That's how marketing works. It goes in deep when you cut right. So uh, you, you could see that when you start marketing your work, you have to look for every opportunity. Maggie and I were just having a great time this morning. Yeah, Maggie's like my first call at 4.30, so poor Maggie has to deal with me before the coffee hits. But she, yeah, we just had a wonderful time talking about, oh, 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 you could, oh, you know, it's just this constant, like, possibilities yeah, abound, so. At this point, our conversation takes a little bit of a turn, and we start looking at some paintings some interesting information and insight on paintings we do cover and we come back to our marketing ideas in just a few minutes so stay tuned listen in there's probably some amazing advice that you will get uh, here about paintings and checkering and some of the things that the students on patreon experience thank you very much for tuning into this podcast you can get more information on my patreon station by going to patreon and looking up stefan bauman you can also get more podcasts by going to your local podcast station where you can listen in to more material just like this there's a lot of material on youtube but you can just go directly to my website at www.stephanbelma.com and there you can get an insight on my podcast, information about my YouTube videos, my PBS show, 
my YouTube videos and look into getting coaching all, all in one place. So go to www.stephanbauman.com and there you can register for a free book. And if you're interested in coaching, please don't hesitate to just give me a call at 415-606-9074. And now back to our original podcast. Our first question that comes from Maggie, this is part of what we were talking about earlier. And I said, oh, answer some of those questions online because I'd like to be able to discuss that with some of my students. And so these are just the beginning. We'll take on a few. Uh, I would appreciate if people would just take the opportunity to actually um, uh, write out questions. And I'm going to change this from the uh, screen back to me again so we can actually see the, the whole talk here. But um, I'd like you guys to take the opportunity to write down questions during the week and send them to me. We're only going to be looking at a couple of questions today. And I would like to kind of every, close off every one of our Zoom meetings with these questions that people want. And some of these questions that I have here are from people that we haven't even met through our Zoom calls yet. But I want to be able to answer just some questions. So if you have some questions, feel free to go ahead and send them to me and we can answer them here. This is the new segment of the Bauman Art Talk, the Power Talk. So she says, uh, question, this is about marketing. And I think it's a good place to start. It's like choosing a name. So a business type name such as Maggie's Art and Soul versus a name, uh, Fine Art something. Okay, so like you know, Maggie Fine Art. Um, uh, what, uh, what about using a maiden name? Um, you know, once you become married, you have a potential of having your name changed or if you get divorced, what, you know, what do you do with that name? So a good thing about to remember when you are when you are uh, setting up your idea of what you're going to be doing with marketing. And let's face it, a lot of people go marketing is not the thing that you want to do. But the reality is, is that it is something that um, uh, you want to kind of think of, because if you write a book and nobody reads it, what's the, what's the sense in writing a book in the first place? And so you want to get your work out there. And one thing you got to realize is that your name is your name brand. That is who you are. You, you can't underestimate the, 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 your name. And if you use uh, Maggie's fine art and soul or, or, you know, her name is Maggie Watkins. It's like, you know, you, you, you market that name. Now I go by Stefan Bauman and I have the television show, the grand view. And I adopted the Grand View at, from seeing a show from Thomas Hill back in 1970. And so, you know, it, it made such an impression, that name had such an impression that I said, if I was ever going to have an art show, it would be called the Grand View. Not knowing I was going to have a PBS television show named by that, but everything else. So it's just it, that name encompasses everything. But I've had a problem because I've had websites that say the Grand View and then Stephen Bauman and that I have my Instagram the Grand View and then, you know, my other stuff is Stephen Bauman. And the thing is, now you have two things you got to market and you want to make sure that when you are marketing that you have one thing. It's hard enough to just market your name. So you want to kind of be very careful with that. And unfortunately, we live in a world <clears throat> that's changing quickly. But, uh, you know, just seeing how much prejudice there is out there still, um, women's names uh, don't necessarily carry the same weight as men's names do when it comes to marketing. And it's changing because a lot of really great female artists are coming out, especially in the plain air market. So, you know, thank God. But a lot of collectors still like to collect male names. And so you want people to kind of view your painting you want people to kind of view your work first as for what the value of the work is. And so if you put M. Watkins in, they don't know if that's Mike or, or in your case, it's, it's Margaret. But it kind of immediately takes off the femininity of it. And so now they can look at it and, and look at it for what it is. Um, and unfortunately, it's, it, fortunately, it's changing, but unfortunately, it still has a little bit of that stigma. 
but you know 20 years ago 30 years ago it was almost a cardinal sin to put your your a, a female name on a painting it was just automatically but the thing is the name is so crucial so we were talking about an artist in ukiah grace hudson is her name so so we talked grace. about yeah grace yes. hudson and so grace hudson was a female artist or a woman artist that was at the turn of the century and uh she did Native American Modoc uh, children and uh, women painting baskets. And this is right at the tail end of the, all of that Native American history. And she did beautiful portraits and she's in a lot of uh, museums on the West Coast. And she's just a, an amazing painter. But she's always advertised and, and you know, signed her paintings, uh, Grace Hudson. And now as you drive through Ukiah, which is north of San Francisco, uh, there's a brown plaque that says the Grace Hudson Museum and home. And you actually, her house is actually designated as a historical site. Um, and so it's, it's one of the wonderful successes of you know, being forthright and putting your name on something. Um, a lot of times my students ask me about uh, whether they should uh, adopt a, a, a surname or use their maiden name. Uh, it just all depends on what kind of relationship you have with your husband right now. Uh, you might be better off using your maiden name. Um, I don't re recommend having a, 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 you know, a made up name, but uh, you know, you want to have a name that you want to hold on to. Uh, a lot of times what, stu what uh, students have done is uh, ask me, you know, so what should I do, my maiden name or my married name? And I go, so who are you? Yeah, who are you? Do you feel that you are you a Watkins or are you a Smith? You know, if your name, maiden name was Smith, yeah, how do you feel about that? Some some people get married at a really early age, and they're now more of a Watkins, you know, the, in their life than they ever were a Smith. But some names people identify with you know if i had the last name of baxter and i was going to get married i would hold on to baxter because that's a really cool name watkins is a really cool name bellman eh, you know it's not it's not it doesn't have the w in it which is really fun to work with um but uh but anyway your name is your brand and that's what you want to market first i wouldn't recommend having anything else and if you're going to get a start to your marketing you want to make sure that you have a website that's named after you and fasa will they're able to do that they're able to get a fasa where you actually have your name and then a fasa address and it's better than getting like uh, uh, and i'm sorry to use your name maggie but this is this is promotion for you because you get it out there so use it as marketing um, but the thing is, you want to have, you want to have a name that you go by, and that's just what you go by. You don't change it. If if you feel like you're going to change it, or if you feel like you're going to change husbands, think about keeping his name for your art. And there are actually artists that will actually sue as part of the divorce. They'll actually say, I, you know, I'm going to divorce you because you're a jerk, but I'm going to keep your name. And I'll give up everything else, but because you've done all of your marketing under that name, you want to make sure you have that because rebranding yourself is very difficult. I have the problem with trying to pull together the Grandview and Stefan Bauman. And so it's really important to try to get all of these, all of the names under one thing so that you can keep track of it. And then you want to have your Instagram have the same name. You want to have your, your um, uh, Facebook, your, every, your website. Everything has to be beautifully under your name, including even the way you answer your phone. If you have a, a recording, you want to make sure that your recording's there because you, it, it takes so little. If somebody's interested in pursuing you, as, uh, you know, as an artist, it takes so little to get them off track. And if you have a couple of ways that you do your thing in a Google search, they're gone. They're just gone. You want to be able to directly point out you know that particular name and then as we talked earlier you want to have a name tag so that when you go to an art show that has your name on it and you know as i said um i this is my name tag and yeah it really gets attention when you go shopping at walmart and people come up to you and go what is that i go 
that's just my name tag. It says Stefan Bauman on it. I do have the grand view on it. See, and this is the problem that you have if you have another name and you're working towards something. You have to put the you know the 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 secondary name. So I have the grand view Stefan Bauman, and then I have PBS artist. This is the most important thing. Your name is the most important thing. And when you go to an art show, every artist that's listening to this, every artist that's that that is you know on Patreon that is listening to this or anybody that that is going to watch this video, this is the most important thing is your name. And you you put it on these things and this is put on by um, a magnet. So because I wear a lot of leather um, and it pretty much just sticks wherever you want. The, the magnet is so high. And so you can wear it around and it's part of your advertising. So your, your, your question today, Maggie, was absolutely perfect. It's like, if you're going to set yourself up, everything's in the name. And you want to make sure it's something you keep. On your painting, I suggested maybe put M. Watkins on it, you know? You might go with Maggie, but Maggie's kind of a, you know, kind of a, a nickname, you know, for Margaret. Um, you may want to consider Margaret Watkins because you kind of have to think about 100 years from now when people are driving through South Carolina and they see a historical marker that says, you know, Maggie Watkins Studio. It might look a little more oppressive to have Margaret Watkins and they go, oh, yeah, I know who she is. So you might want to even kind of think about that in your marketing. Um, but if you like Maggie and it works for you and you can identify it and you can put it on a name tag and walk in with Walmart with your head high and answer questions, then awesome. That's, that's the name you should have. So what's in the name? Apparently everything. If you'd like to get more information about what we're doing here at the Grandview and at the ranch and workshops and YouTube, you can get all of that information on www.stephanbauman.com and there you can register for a free book. If you're interested in coaching, and I highly recommend it because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know that you don't know it, it's a good idea to get a coach. And if you think you can just pick up all your information uh, watching YouTube videos and go somewhere, I highly would have you rethink that idea. But if you want anything else and if you want to watch more of my uh, YouTube videos or listen in to some of my podcasts, go to my website, download a free book. You can give me a call for coaching at 415-606-9074. And as always, don't go into the studio unless you're going to change the world. And always remember to paint with passion. I'm Stefan Bauman, and thank you so much on listening in to this podcast. And I look forward to having you tune in in the future. So have a grand day.